So in lesson 3.6, we're going to explore the chain rule. So the chain rule is really important because there are times where we have a composition of functions where the rules we have so far will not um, allow us to find the derivative without it. So it's going to be really important that we understand what the chain rule is. Now, this text does a few things a little different, but um, and I'll kind of point those out to you, and I'll kind of show you what I think is the most important thing to make sure you know. So here, we've got this function that this g of x that is stuck inside of another function. So, so look at, we've got this function and g of x is stuck inside of f. Well, what we do is we take the derivative of the outer function following the rules of the outer function. But the thing that you have to remember is you leave the stuff alone and then you multiply on the outside by the derivative of the stuff. Okay, now, so they've given us here a little strategy. You know, if you look at the function, what is the g of x that's stuck inside? And what is the rule of the original f of x function that you would use? So if it's a power, we use a power rule. If it's a secant, we, you know, uh, do uh, secant tangent. You know, all those different rules from before. And you'll notice in this step here um, that you take the derivative, but we leave the stuff inside. So if it's a power, the power drops down in front, power goes down by one, the stuff stays there. Then we multiply by the derivative of the outside stuff. So I always think of it, leave the stuff inside, and this is the derivative of the stuff. So just think, I have stuff stuck. What do I do when I have stuff stuck? You know, so if we had something to the hundredth power, like, you know, if we had, um, let's call it h of x since they did. If we had this function that was uh, x squared minus five to the hundredth power, and we wanted to take the derivative of it, okay? We don't have a rule for that we would have to do the multiplication 100 times, get a huge polynomial, and then we would have to take the derivative of each individual piece. Well, what the chain rule says is if we identify that the outer function is a power to 100, and our inner function is x squared minus 5, we can do a shortcut. We can take the derivative like we normally would for a power. Power drops down in front, Stuff stays there, power goes down by one, and then I multiply by the derivative of the inside stuff. So that's what the chain rule is. It allows us to do the derivatives of more functions. More functions because we have a function that's stuck, because we have uh, a rule we can't apply. There's something inside of a sine or a cosine. There's, you know, uh, there's so many different pieces that this allows us another tool to find some derivatives. Okay, so same thing. If we have a power with a function stuck inside, you're gonna drop the power down in front, power goes down by one, the stuff stays there. But you have to remember to multiply by the derivative of the stuff. And I'm gonna say stuff, I'm gonna say stuff and junk. <laughs> My stuff is stuck there, the junk is stuck there, what's stuck, okay? The inside stuff. So when we look at this um, derivative, right now we have Kind of a few different ways we can go about doing it. Uh, we could multiply 3x squared plus 1 times 3x squared plus 1, get a polynomial, and do the uh, quotient rule. So that's perfectly acceptable. 
But what's really cool is we could rewrite this as 3x squared plus 1 to the negative 2 power, and we could use the chain rule because the outside function is my power function. The inside function is my stuff that's stuck, 3x squared plus 1. So let's use the chain rule to do this derivative. So the power drops down in front. The stuff stays there. The power goes down by 1. Now, when the stuff stays there, I mean, it's exactly as is, no changes. So the stuff, 3x squared plus 1, stays there. But now we're going to take the derivative of the stuff. The derivative of 3x squared is 6x. Uh, the derivative of 1 is 0, so it's just 6x. Now, algebraically, could we make that prettier? Sure could. We could make that a negative 12x on top. And because of the negative power on the 3x squared plus 1, we could put a 3x squared plus 1 to the third on the bottom. So there's an application of the chain rule. Now, this is kind of interesting. This notation gets people in trouble a lot. So I've been doing this a while now. What I want you to get in the habit of doing is every time you see that little power next to the sine or cosine, I want you to rewrite what it really is. This really is the sine of x all to the third power. Mathematicians, we're lazy. We want to write it in a shortcut way if we can. So that's just the shortcut way of this. We should rewrite it like this so we recognize that it is a candidate for the chain rule. Why? Well, I don't know what sine of x is when it's cubed. Um, I can't cube it in any sort of way that's going to make me allow me to do any rule I know. i got to use the chain. Okay, so the derivative. I'm going to drop the power down in front. The stuff stays there. The power goes down by 1. Don't forget, you must multiply by the derivative of the inside stuff. Well, the inside stuff is a sine of x. The derivative of that is a cosine of x. So that's the derivative of the sine of x cubed. So here, they want the equation of the tangent line uh, of h of x at x equals 2. Don't make it harder than it is. Remember our steps to find the equation of the tangent line. First step, find the derivative. Second step, find the slope of the tangent using that derivative. Third step, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We know that. Now, this is the function you'll see um, that is similar to the one we saw here in 348. I would not, excuse me, I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. I would not use the uh, quotient rule here. I mean, you could, but you don't have to. Let's instead rewrite it as a negative exponent so I can use the power rule. So now we're ready to find the derivative. So the derivative of this going to drop the power down in front, leave it alone. Power goes down by 1. Don't forget, I must take the derivative of the inside stuff. Now let's make it a little prettier. So that's negative 6 over 3x minus 5 cubed. Okay, so that step 1 is done. Step 2. Now we're going to find the slope of the tangent by plugging in the x value they gave us. Well, the x value was 2. So we're going to get negative 6 over 6 minus 5 cubed, which is negative 6 over 1 cubed, which is 1. So it's negative 6. Now, for step 3, I need a point slope. It's the point slope formula. So I know the x value is 2. Let's plug in here to find what the y value would be. That would be 1 over uh, 1 squared, which is 1. So we have a point of 2, a slope of negative 6, 
Now we're ready to find the equation of the tangent line. So it's y minus 1 equals negative 6 times x minus 2. Now I know you know how to simplify it. Don't worry about simplifying it. What you've got there is perfectly acceptable. Okay, so there is example 350. Let's look at 351. Now they've just given it a general function, g of x is stuck inside. So your outside function is cosine. The g of x is the stuff. This one is your stuff, g of x. I don't know what it is, eh, g of x. Make it easier when I take the derivative, I'm just gonna write g prime. Okay, so the derivative of this, the outer function is a cosine. The derivative of that is negative sine. So it's gonna be the negative sine of the stuff times the derivative of the stuff. Well, again, I don't know what g is. Its derivative is g prime. So it is the outer derivative stuff stuck. And then this is the derivative of the stuff. If you just have a general form like this, eh, just leave a little prime symbol. I don't know what it is. So it is what it is. Let's take a look at this one. You always want to ask yourself, is something stuck inside of something else? Yes. 5x squared is stuck. We want to find the derivative of something with, with a thing stuck inside. So we're going to take the outer derivative. So that is a negative sign. Of the stuff times the derivative of the stuff. Well, what's the derivative of 5x squared? 10x. Can you do anything else to that? Nah, not really. I mean, you could maybe put the 10x in front of the sine of 5x squared, but you can't do much else. So there is example 352. Algebraically, mathematically, these aren't super difficult, but what's difficult is recognizing what to do, and that comes with practice. So please practice. Here, guess what? We got another thing stuck. We've got 4x to the fifth plus 2x stuck inside of a secant of x. So if they want us to find the derivative of that, we have to use the chain rule. So the derivative of a secant is a secant tangent. Now, when we have stuff inside, that stuff just gets put there again. We don't change it. We don't do anything to it. The stuff is stuck. So put that stuff in a secant and in a tangent. The derivative of a secant is secant tangent. So the derivative of a secant of stuff is a secant of stuff tangent of stuff times the derivative of stuff. Well, the derivative of that stuff is 20x to the fourth plus 2. And there you go. You can't, you can't really write that much better. Just leave it. These are not necessary for you to know. You just have to recognize. Here I've got something stuck in the sine, so I get a cosine. Something stuck in a cosine, I get a negative sine. Stuck in a tangent, so you can square it, and so on. So if you want to uh, take a picture of that, fine. Are we going to memorize those? No. Do you memorize the original? Sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine, and so on. Yes. So that's all you need. Okay. So let's take a look at this one. Now I am gonna not. I am not going to multiply all that out to the fifth and all that out to the seventh and get some giant polynomial first. Think about using your time wisely. That is not a good use of your time. But what I will note is that this is a product. So I'm going to think of this as my first and this as my second. 
Okay, so when I do the derivative of this, it is going to be the first. Oh, I'm so sorry. It is going to be the first times the derivative of the second. Now, that is a chain rule because I have 3x minus 2 is stuck. It's my stuff that is stuck inside. So the 7 drops down, stuff stays there, power goes down by 1, multiply by the derivative of the stuff inside, plus the second times the derivative of the first. So the 5 drops down in front, Stuff stays there, power goes down by one, multiply by the derivative of the stuff. The derivative of two x plus one is just a two. Now, there's not much you can do with that. There are times we will need to. So I just wanna talk about it just for a minute. So let's just do a little rewrite here. Um, we have this numerical component, seven and three, we can bring a 21 out in front. And the other stuff I'm going to leave, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to color code it too. <clears throat> and then here we got a five and a two I'll put in front. Now we're going to be doing something here. Um, and I am going to do a little slight rearrange in order too. Okay, so. Normally I would say this is perfectly fine, first step, this, great, uh, and then I would say stop. But I, I do want to just show you some tools that allow us to factor because there's gonna be times where we're gonna have a difficult derivative where we're gonna need to factor. And so the reason I put this in order is because so we can really see how many two x plus ones we have and how many of the 3x minus 2s we have, okay? Now, 21 and 10 have no common factors, so we don't, don't have to deal with that. But the lowest power I see on a 2x plus 1 is a 4, so I can take out 4 of those. And the lowest power I see on a 3x minus 2 is a 6, so I can take 6 of those out. Okay. Now, let's think about we're factoring those out. So what is going to be left? Well, we're definitely going to have a 21. And then in this first piece, I took out four of the reds, two x plus ones, and six of the blues. So I only have one of the red left. And then I have a 10. Now let's look at this piece. I took out all four reds and six out of the seven blues. So I have one of these. Now that is very common that you should be able to factor out some of the originals. And now let's make this back piece a little prettier. Okay, so we have here, we have four of the two x plus ones, six of the three x minus twos. See how they both went down by one, isn't that neat? And then um, what's left here, if we make it pretty, so that's going to be 42x plus 21 plus 30x minus 20 for a final answer of 2x plus 1 to the 4th times 3x minus 2 to the 6th times the quantity of 72x plus 1. So hopefully I didn't make any weird mistakes there, but... There you go. So again, is this rule or this you know, first step perfectly acceptable? Yes. Will we get need to get to a point where we might have to factor and get to that bottom there? Yes. So how much you do um, depends on what you know what what's going to be asked of us. Um, so there you go. So there are times where we have an inside function that has its own inside function. So the first thing I would do if I were a person doing this derivative, the first thing I would do is I would rewrite that as the cosine of 
7x squared plus 1 in brackets all to the fourth power. Okay, so we have a fourth power with something yucky stuck inside. So we get to do the power rule. Four is going to drop down in front, power is going to go down by one, the stuff's going to stay there but we have to take the derivative of the stuff. Okay, so first let's do that first piece. So the derivative of a fourth power thing, the four drops down in front, the power becomes a three, the stuff is gonna stay there. But don't forget, I have to take the derivative of this stuff. Well, what is the derivative of a cosine but a negative sine of that stuff times the derivative of that stuff. The derivative of 7x squared plus 1 is 14x. So you have to keep going until you get to a place that just has an x. Now, 14x is okay. Remember how constants work. But you cannot have a function that has an inner function because you have to take the derivative of the inner function. So that's why this one has a three-step process. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. So we've got a position function here, and we want to know the velocity. So even if we have a uh, position function that is complicated, we still have to take the first derivative. So our position function, let me write that down, has something stuck in a sine and something stuck in a cosine. So the derivative of that which is just going to be our velocity equation, is going to be the derivative of a sine is a cosine, leave the stuff, times the derivative of the stuff. The derivative of a cosine is a negative sine, leave the stuff, times the derivative of the stuff. Okay. Now, because we're going to have to plug something into this function, let's actually do a little bit of rearrange. Let's do two cosine of 2t minus 3 sine of 3t. Okay, now, they want us to find the velocity at pi over 6. So let's take our velocity function and plug in pi over 6. Remember, pi over 6 is 30 on our unit circle. I'm so sorry. The point at 30 is 30 is square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. Okay, so that's going to be, oh, they're messing with us. Wait a second. <laughs> we'll, we'll get back to that. I jumped the gun there. Okay, so if we put pi over 6 here, that's 2 times pi over 6, 2 pi over 6. This one's going to be 3 pi over 6. So this one's really going to become pi over 3. And this one's really going to become pi over 2. Okay. So pi over 3 is 60 degrees. The point there is 1 half square root of 3 over 2. 90 is pi over 2. The point there is 0. Okay. So pi over 3 cosine is the x value. That's 1 half. That's 2 times 1 half. The sine of pi over 2 is the y value at pi over 2, or 1. So that's 1 minus 3, or negative 2. So the velocity is negative 2. They didn't give us any units. If they give you units, use the units. So there is example 356. So here we got something interesting. Okay, we've seen these before. Do not overthink them. We want to find the derivative of h at 1. 
we've got this h function. It is a composition of two functions. We've got two functions, one stuck inside. Okay, so let's just write down what we know. The derivative of this, it would be the outside derivative, leave the stuff alone, times the derivative of the inside. So that's just the rule. So we're just rewriting the rule. And they want us to do the derivative at one. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put ones in before I even deal with any of the facts they gave us. So that's gonna be f prime of g of one times g prime of one. Okay, so let's do a little bit of thinking here. g of one they gave us was four. So we can make that a four very quickly. g prime of one they gave us was three. We can make that a three, so let's do that. So we know that g of one, we replaced with uh, a four, which I didn't do, sorry, with a four. g of one is four, and g prime of one is three. Okay, and now they should have given us information about what f of prime is, otherwise we just gotta leave it. They told us f prime of four was seven. So this fact is gonna go right there. And so that's just seven times three or 21. So there is the chain rule. Now, we haven't used Leibniz not notation a lot, but Leibniz notation for a composite function pretty much is the notation that we've seen. We take the outer function, which is our y function, you know, our like the outer part in terms of our outer function, and then we take the derivative of that inside function um, in terms of x. So let me, let me kind of give you the Leibniz notation example for 358. So I'm going to let the inside function be, um, uh, let's call it uh, u, or x to, uh, yeah, we'll call it x to the fifth. No, let's do it like this. Okay, I'm sorry, let's see. I'm just trying to think of a, a good way to tell. Um, let, let's let u equal x over three x plus two, that will work. Yeah, there we go, that'll work. Let's, let's let u be our inside function. And so this, the derivative in terms of u, if we make that u to the fifth, our derivative in terms of u is 5u to the fourth, okay? Now, uh, now we have to take the derivative of u in terms of x. So that is a perfect example of our quotient rule. So the bottom times the derivative of the top, minus the top, times the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. So let's make that prettier. We're gonna get three x plus two minus three x over three x plus two squared. And so that's gonna be two over three x plus two squared. And so uh, the derivative is just going to be 5u to the 4th times 2 over 3x plus 2 squared. And what is u in terms of x? From that you see here, we've got this x notation. We know u is x over 3x plus 2. Let's put it back in. And so our final answer is 5 times x over 3x plus 2 to the 4th times 3 over 3x plus 2 squared. Okay, now, are we going to do Leibniz notation for com 
uh, composite functions like this? No. Um, but I just it's a proof kind of that the that the chain rule works. Um, because what is it? This stuff is stuck inside. Um, we did the power rule. And then uh, we took the derivative of the outside stuff. Is that a three or a two? I'm sorry, this should be a two. Okay, now could we pretty that up? Yes. Am I too concerned about that? No. So let's not concern ourselves with this. Okay, and here is your homework. There you go. Okie doke. Have a good one. Thanks.